Dachau was one of the most abhorrent concentration camps of the Third Reich. It was inaugurated in 1933 and remained in operation until 1945. During those years, tens of thousands of prisoners were sent there and experienced indescribable suffering. They were subjected to the arbitrariness of the prison guards, who operated with total impunity and acted as lords and masters of the lives of the inmates. Punishments ranged from whipping sessions to confinement in small, dark cells, where the inmate did not see sunlight again for months, and was fed crusts of moldy bread and rotten water. No one in their right mind would think that a concentration camp was a nice place. However, in 1941, a person visited the site and recorded his impressions in his personal diary. Today we have been walking through Dachau, and Dad has shown me the orchards where lettuce, cereals and pear trees grow. Then we have seen the pictures that the prisoners have painted, they were all very beautiful. In the end we had a very good lunch. These are the words of Gudrun Himmler, the daughter of Heinrich Himmler, the Nazi leader of the SS and one of the most important men of the Third Reich. At that time, the girl was 12 years old, so it was impossible for her not to notice the terrible state in which the inmates were. In truth, she had been raised to ignore the tears, the bruise marks, and the disturbing thinness that made their skin hang in tatters. She was the daughter of a monster, and once she reached adulthood, it would be proven that the apple doesn't fall far from the tree. Today, in this new episode of Military History, we will tell you all about Gudrun Himmler, the Nazi princess. But before continuing, and if you are a fan of firearms, we want to invite you to our new channel, World of Guns, dedicated to analyzing and exploring the most powerful, modern and unusual weapons in the world, as well as their combat history, their development and much more. You can find the link to the channel in the description and in the first comment, don't miss it and give us your support by subscribing to World of Guns. And now, let's continue with today's video. Gudrun Himmler was born on August 8, 1929, in the city of Munich, Germany. She came into the world just as the National Socialist Movement was entering its prime. After a decade of promoting hatred of Jews, democracy, liberalism and socialism, Nazism had finally taken root in the population. It would not take long to garner millions of votes and become one of the main political parties of the moment. One of the architects of such an achievement was Heinrich Himmler, Adolf Hitler's trusted man. The leader had remained loyal to the Fuhrer even in the worst moments, such as when he was arrested after a failed coup attempt. Thanks to his intelligence and organizational capacity, Himmler was appointed to head the SS, an elite paramilitary organization, to which only Germans considered to be of pure blood entered. Gudrun was the only child from his marriage to Margaret Seagroth, a nurse. The girl grew up in a tense environment, since her father was away from her house for work reasons. In practice, this meant supervising the concentration camp system, a task he began to do from 1933. Her upbringing was done by her mother, although the SS leader never lost contact with his daughter. Those close to him knew that he adored her more than anything in the world, he called her on the phone almost every day, he wrote her letters weekly and from time to time he made her fly to his offices to see her in person. Himmler called her by the nickname of Puppy, a word that in German means little doll. It is strange to think that one of the biggest Nazi criminals, responsible for the internal security of the Third Reich and in charge of arresting and imprisoning hundreds of thousands of people, has also been a good father. However, this seems to have been the case, and the bond between the two was extremely strong. At the same time, it is natural that the SS leader's indifference to people of the supposedly inferior races permeated Gudrun. That is why, when she was 12 years old and she visited the Dachau concentration camp, as we told you at the beginning, she was not moved by the horror she saw there.
On the other hand, Himmler wanted Gudrun to receive the best possible education, so he sent her to an institute of national political education. These were the most prestigious educational establishments in Nazi Germany, and it was where the children of the elite were educated to learn the values and virtues of National Socialism. They were expected to be the future leadership of the Third Reich, so discipline was extremely severe. Himmler placed great hopes in his daughter, since these establishments had very high standards of study. However, the girl had to drop out of school due to her poor academic results. She decided to follow in her father's footsteps and at age 16 she joined the SS in the city of Brno, in what is now the Czech Republic. At that moment, the young woman did not suspect that her life was about to take a radical turn. In 1945, Germany surrendered to the Allies since it was cornered on all sides and the Fuhrer had committed suicide. However, Himmler evaded his enemies and went on the run, using false documentation and a change of appearance. He shaved off his mustache, shaved his head and put on an eye patch so he wouldn't be recognized. None of it helped him, since he was eventually arrested by the Allies. On May 23, 1945, knowing that a trial and a death sentence awaited him, he preferred to bite into a cyanide capsule and kill himself with the poison. The news devastated Gudrun, although she did not have time to cry, since she was soon detained along with her mother by the Americans. The women were housed in different prison camps in Italy, France, and Germany. Finally, they were taken against their will to testify in Nuremberg, where the war crimes of the defeated were tried. Gudrun always referred to this stage as the darkest of her life, as she was treated as if she were to blame for what her father had done and as if she had to repent for his sins. However, she never renounced Nazi ideology, and she was sympathetic to Himmler's actions, arguing that they had to be seen in their context. By relativizing her crimes, she was throwing a cloak of suspicion over the statements of the victims of the concentration camps and their suffering. On the other hand, she never admitted that her father had committed suicide. Instead, she always maintained that he had been assassinated by the British. At the end of the Nuremberg trials she was released and attempted to rebuild her life as a dressmaker and bookbinder. Her life story, however, brought her numerous problems when it came to finding a stable job. Around those years, she married a propagandist with Nazi sympathies, Wolf Dieter Berwitz, from whom she took her last name. In this way, by changing her name, she could go unnoticed and not be pointed out as the daughter of a war criminal. It is at this point that we come across one of the greatest mysteries of her biography. In 1961, she was hired by the German intelligence service under an assumed name, according to official records, to serve as a secretary. At this time, the spy agency was commanded by Reinhard Gellin, who had served in the Wehrmacht when Hitler was in power. After the end of the Third Reich, Gellin managed to successfully retrain and adapt to democracy. To remake the intelligence service, he hired people famous for their ties to Nazism and for their anti-communist activity. Gudrun was one of them, although it is impossible to know exactly what her true tasks were. In 1963, following a restructuring of the West German government, Himmler's daughter was dismissed from her post. From then on, she lived a low-profile life and remained associated with the Still Hilf organization, which in German means silent help. This group's objective was to help former SS members who were in legal trouble or who were fugitives from justice. Through an extensive network of contacts, Still Hilf provided escape routes for criminals, whom they helped flee to South America under a false identity. Gudrun was one of the group's main financiers and spokespersons, and was revered like a true Nazi princess. She regularly attended the meetings and, on the few times she appeared in public, she was seen surrounded by men who served in the SS with her father. In that circle, it was common to refer to her as the Mother Teresa of the National Socialists. In 2015, a British journalist traveled to Germany to confront her at her home. 
He accused her of aiding murderers and of lacking scruples. The woman's response was brief and laconic. I never talk about my job, I just do what I can and when I can. It is not known how many criminals she helped, although dozens are suspected. Gudrun passed away on May 24, 2018, at the age of 88, in the city of Munich. Until the end of her days she wore a silver gold brooch given to her by her father, which showed four horses arranged in the shape of a swastika. We have reached the end of the video, leave us your comment below and don't forget to subscribe to our channel to learn about many more military events that left their mark on history.